In this video, I'm going to show you where you can get SVG icons for your Power BI reports, as well as how to modify them in Microsoft PowerPoint and then add them into Power BI buttons. Let's jump in. So what are SVG icons? SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. It's a file format known as Vector, and it allows you to be able to resize images without losing any of the quality. Now this is because SVGs use mathematical calculations to define their components. This allows the image to always scale perfectly and have perfect clarity no matter what size you make them. Now PNG and JPEG files, on the other hand, are called raster image types, which are pixel based. Pixels are individual dots of color, and the pixels within PNG and JPEG files are going to be based on their original sizes when you saved those files. So when you try to enlarge a smaller PNG or JPEG file, like we see here on the right, you're going to start to lose quality because those defined pixels are being stretched out. And this can lead to blurriness like we see here. So when do we use each file type? Well, SVGs work great for logos, icons, and any type of simple image with solid colors. So they're the perfect option for button icons within Power BI, since the quality will always be perfect no matter the size. Now, PNG files work best when we have a little more going on, such as shadows or glow effects or gradients. I typically create my Power BI backgrounds as PNG files. And then we have JPEG files. Now these file types work best for images that are very detailed, such as with photos. Now on this Power BI report page, you'll notice that we're using icons within the navigation buttons here on the left hand side. Now each button actually contains two different icons. In this example, we have a white version for the active, and then we have an off-white version of the icon for the non-active buttons. So you can insert different versions of the icon depending on the state you want that icon to show in. We hover over here. Notice how that icon changes from off-white to white when we hover over it. Now this contrast difference isn't just for aesthetics, it's a deliberate UX choice that helps users instantly recognize where they are within the report. So if we look at this dashboard icon, we can see that it's highlighted in orange, the text is white, it's bold, and it's underlined. And the icon, like I just mentioned, is white. So each of these elements is an intentional design decision to enhance the user experience and clarity of the navigation here. Now, why even use icons? Well, I'm sure you've heard the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Icons are extremely important to incorporate in your reports. They serve as visual shortcuts, allowing users to instantly understand functionality without reading text. And when used correctly, they create a universal language that makes navigation effortless. Take Power BI, for example. If you were to look at the top header, you can see that the developers have incorporated icons on top of the text. If we look at our visualization pane, we can see they opted for icons alone and then only showing the text when we hover over them. Now let's look at this report example. Look at this contact icon here at the very bottom left corner. Now most users are going to instantly recognize its meaning because the symbol of a closed envelope is a very familiar symbol to most people. If we look at the button above it, we can see this question mark icon. Again, a very familiar symbol to most people. Well, icons add that extra layer of familiarity, making the experience more intuitive. Plus, they enhance the overall aesthetic of the page, helping you keep your design clean and visually appealing. All right, so let's quickly review how we can put icons into buttons. We're going to click on this period button right here. We're going to go to style and first decide on the state that we want this icon to live within. So the default state is the original state that people see. So I'm going to leave it on default, scroll down, open up icon. 
You're going to change the icon type to custom, and then you're going to click browse. You're going to locate the SVG icon that you saved to your computer and click open. And then from here, you can adjust the image size if you'd like. You can see what I'm choosing to do here is set the image size to normal and set the icon size to 20 pixels. And like I said earlier, it doesn't matter what I put in here, that icon will always be perfectly clear. Also notice how I have a five pixel padding on the left hand side to create that little extra white space within the button. Now also notice how my text is all perfectly aligned to the left without overlapping the buttons. So the trick to that is under the text, changing the padding on the left hand side to a padding that goes past the icon. So if I were to change this to zero, look how the text is now on top of the icon. We do 20, we see we still don't have enough room. So once we find that sweet spot, so for me it's 35 pixels, I just want to make sure all of my other buttons have the same exact padding on the left hand side. Now after I've done that, I'm just going to switch it to my on hover state and locate my white icon. So it would be the exact same icon that I already have for the default state, except it's going to be the color white instead of off white. So I'm going to select that and then you can see the difference right there. Now where can we go to download free SVG icons? Well, one resource is Microsoft PowerPoint. So if you have Microsoft PowerPoint, simply open it up, go to insert icons, and then you're going to see all of the available icons that you have. You can do a search on the top left hand side, or you can even click on the categories and search that way as well. What I like to do is start from the top and then just slowly work my way down. And then when I see one that matches what I'm looking for, I'll click it and then click insert. Now from here, you can resize it, whatever size you want. And honestly, it really doesn't matter. I can make this super small and it'll still resize perfectly when I insert it into a button in Power BI. You can change the color here. So while I have it selected, I can go to graphics fill and I can change it to any color that I'd like. And then once I'm satisfied with the color and the icon, I'm going to right click on it, save as picture. Find the folder I'd like to save it in. I'm going to name it. And then I'm going to make sure my save as type is scalable vector graphics format SVG. Then I'll click save. Now this next source that I'm going to show you is probably my favorite free resource. It's called pictogrammers.com. Once you go here, you're going to click on icons and fonts. And then you're going to click on material design icons. You see they have a huge library, almost 7,500 icons in here. And then from here, you can do a search. You can use the categories if you'd like, or you can just simply scroll down the list, try to identify the one or ones that you would like to use. Once you find one that you want, I'm just going to click it. You're going to go here to the top right, click download SVG, and then it's going to download to your download folder. From there, what you can do, if you'd like to modify it, Let's go back to PowerPoint, go to insert, picture, this device. You're going to locate the file. So we can see I found it. It's called account.svg. Click insert. And then from here, you can resize it if you'd like. Change the color, just like we did with the PowerPoint versions. And then you can save that as well and name it whatever you'd like to name it. Now you can even take this a step further, like you see I did here, where you can utilize that site, download all of the icons that you want, insert them in Microsoft PowerPoint, name them, and then one by one, you can save these with their new names, then delete the old ones. What this will do is give you a visual reference of the icons that you've saved and what you named them. Then that way, next time you're trying to locate a particular icon and you're not sure what it looks like, you can quickly open this up, find the icon that you're looking for, note the name, and then go back into your folder and find that icon. So for example, let's say I open this up and I was looking for the icon 
that was the calendar that looked like this. I can quickly see that I named it icon calendar so I can open up my folder type calendar. Now I've quickly located it and I can open it up, insert it into a button, whatever I need to do. And as you can see here, I have different color versions of the same icons. So I have the default black versions. I have a gray version. I have a color version, which I can change obviously to any color I need. Then I have a dark mode version. So these are white. And then I have a dark mode off white version. So these icons are my personal favorite icons. Now as a small gift to you, what I've done is I've saved those icons all into folders and I've loaded it to Google Drive so you can actually download these icons by clicking on the link in the description of this video. There's over 350 icons here that I'm giving to you. And don't worry, one of the main reasons why I love this resource is not only that it has a lot of icons, but also if you look at the license, it's completely free. So I hope these resources along with the icon pack I'm providing is helpful to you. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, click the notification button. That way you'll be notified when I come out with additional Power BI UX UI design videos. If you have any requests for certain video tutorials, please leave them in the comments. And then lastly, if you're looking for a course on advanced Power BI UX UI design, feel free to check out the description where I have a link to my premium course, 14 Days to Mastering Power BI UX UI Design.